Welcome to the PLS YouTube channel. I am Katie North and today is the first class in our water and wave series, rock formations and swirling undercurrents of water. So I hope you enjoy. For your supplies, you will need Peerless watercolors, watercolor brush and paper, masking fluid, extra small detail brush, a pencil, scissors, double-sided tape, and a white gel pen or a white highlight ink. And if you are new to Peerless, welcome! Uh, we are making our mini palette. So I am actually cutting out little squares of the concentrated sheets from the watercolor packets and double-sided tape them to a palette. So once you have your setup all ready and your palette done, it is time to start sketching out our rocks. Uh, I don't have an outline uploaded for this. Honestly, I feel like everyone's are gonna be a little bit different and it's gonna look really awesome as they're different. Uh, with this painting, with how much water that we're doing, they look very nice if you do that tape around the edges with the watercolor tape. Um, it's kind of like any tape. You can use masking tape too. It's just something that you wanna peel off the paper you know, pretty gently, but that will, you know, you know, that will release itself, uh, which is a very satisfying part at the end is to take your tape off and see your crisp edges on the side. So, uh, I do have this outline of, um, or my reference photo here, if you'd like to kind of follow around the, lo the rocks that I'm doing. Um, but yeah, I just freehand it. I do bigger rocks and then smaller rocks and some clusters and then I know that the uh, the shadows are going to be pretty dark around there, so I am going to use my artist pen just to give it a pretty harsh line so I don't lose um, my line when I'm actually doing all of my paint. All right, and so now we are going to do our masking fluid. And so when you're thinking about the masking fluid, we're going to be doing this painting in stages. So we're going to be putting down the deepest and the darkest blue for the darkest, like um, the, the deepest part of the ocean, but we want there to be like a separation between the undercurrents and the swirling paint that, not paint, but swirling um, currents around the rocks and like how the wave comes up and it hits the rocks and kind of swirls around, but it's like underneath the surface. So once we outline our rocks with the masking fluid, just because we know we want those to be completely separate and we're gonna do that color after, um, we're going to add the masking fluid in the swirling kind of motions around the rocks, the way the currents would move. So you can see now how I'm kind of like waving it and like kind of making it go in the same directions as that little coast of the, of the rocks and then around in kind of a swirling pattern. Honestly, I feel like the more that you do of this, it looks so cool. Uh, like little swirls, little dots, um, even like little whirlpools because this is going to be not the deepest area of the blue, but the next layer up, which is like, you know, where the bubbles come around and there's come some little like, you know, oh, it just looks so cool. So little swirls, little dots, whirlpools, outlining the rocks and around the, the edges. And you could try different things. You could use like a toothpick. You could use uh, a tip of a brush, all different types of things. Right now I'm doing a bunch of little the tiny dots and uh, yeah, definitely play along with it. There's no right or wrong way to do it. And you know, all, all surfaces of water look so different too. So yeah. And also as soon as you are done with the masking fluid, very, very important. You want the masking fluid to dry 100% before you start watercolor. And so now we are ready to start painting. We are going to do highly wet, and saturated amount of Robin's Egg Blue closer to the rocks, kind of going into an Alice Blue, and then for our shadows and really deep, dark areas, we're going to be doing the Autumn's Indigo. And Autumn's Indigo is one of my favorite colors because it's just like, just packed with color. So a little bit goes a long way. You'll see as soon as you play with it too, like, like a normal amount of paint can kind of like spread out over the page and you'll get kind of diluted over, you know, a certain area. But Autumn's Indigo, I feel like it's just like this amazing blue. Like you can see right here, like how concentrated it is. And a little bit goes a long way. So you do it all along that left edge and then right on the bottom parts of the rocks 
are going to be our darkest shadows and some of that water that's in shadow. And then around the cluster of rocks gets a little bit of the autumn's indigo. And then while it's still wet and drying in certain areas, you can try doing like little dots and speckles of the autumn's indigo and letting the water kind of decide how it's gonna dry on the page. And you can get really cool kind of like, you know, I don't even know, what do they look like? They look like little like snowflake kind of dots. Like we're here, like you do little dots. And when they fan out and let the water lets them dry and, and blend those colors together, you get some really nice organic and natural fades and depths and maybe they look a little bit like coral, but I think it, it works really well and it transitions well between like how it dries for water. So yeah, so while you're doing this layer and when you're happy with it, I want this one to be completely dry before you work on the next layer. And before the next layer of paint, we need to remove our masking fluid. And so you kind of just start by rolling it up in a little ball. And then as you're, you know, working around the page, they'll kind of slowly kind of peel up together. And yeah, just kind of work all the way around until you have all the, the gunk off. And, um, and then we will be ready for the next layer. So once we've got all that gunk off, we are going to be mixing Robin's Egg Blue and Alice Blue, and you want it fairly diluted, um, trying to translucent, and you're going to be doing your second layer of blue, which is mainly focusing around all of those under swirling currents, the swirling undercurrents that you did with the masking fluid. So now they are getting their pigment. So kind of, it's not quite the, the Robin's Egg, and it's not quite the, it's a little bit of the other, and you just make it a little, you know, softer, a little bit more translucent, and you're just gonna be following all along your swirls that you made and putting a little bit of that blue. So when you're looking down, you know, above above the rocks and you see the really dark blue, which is the deeper, the deepers, and then you kind of see where all of those swirling waters are mixing and there's undercurrents, those are the parts we are painting now. And yeah, I just think it looks so pretty. And then, and then we will work on the next bit. While it's still wet, we are going to use the gypsum white. And I feel like this just makes this really cool kind of foamy effect, um, which is right under that first layer. And it are like the tinier bubbles. And while they're wet, um, while that, that little, you know, Robin's egg and Alice blue mixture is wet, go around the edges of where the waves kind of crash onto the rocks with the gypsum white and let the water kind of disperse it and kind of decide where it's all going to go. And then we are going to put down our first layer of the mahogany brown mixed with the other color that gives it more of like a sandy kind of yellowy color. And again, still the wet on wet kind of technique. Um, just, you know, they're rocks. There's nothing too crazy about them, but um, I feel like once you get more of those shadows in the deeper areas, they really pop out. But for now, this is the first layer of the rocks and you just want, you know, a few different colors but mainly just filling in all of um, your rock shapes. And if you're worried about the blue and the rocks touching, it would be a good idea to let those two layers, like the all of the blue and the gypsum white layer dry completely. Uh, if you can look on mine really closely, I've left this like skinny, skinny, skinny white outline. Um, that's just because I'm pretty comfortable with my paints and I know that I can leave that skinny line and not have them touch next to each other and they're not gonna bleed. But if I were to accidentally get them too close, then they would bleed into one another, if that makes sense. But yeah, oh, little tips, I hope that helps. 
So I think they're, it's pretty dry. So once that first layer of the lighter browns dry, is we're going to do our second layer of browns, which are going to be our shadows. So on all of the bottom halves of the rocks, we are gonna use a very concentrated amount of whatever dark brown you're using. And there's really no like, you know, method to my, you know, how I'm just doing a bunch of little lines and slashes and things and just basically making sure the bottom half of the rock is super dark and then with the same tone, but more diluted and more transparent, kind of giving those same kind of textures and lines on the top half of the rock just to kind of give it, you know, some some of the similarity. Um, but yeah, so it really does. It makes those rocks pop out. I am using a little bit more of a warmer, warmer brown than my reference photo, but I just like the, you know, the contrast between the super warm rocks and the aqua of the blue. I think it's super pretty, so. And then once you're done with this layer, we will be able to get a little bit more texture in and definition in the next one. Oh, yeah, okay, and I should say, along with whatever brown you're using, I am mixing it with my Autumn's Indigo for an even darker, and you can see it almost looks black. Uh, when it dries, it kind of pops it out a little bit. And then also, right now, I am mixing my lighter brown with gypsum white and kind of getting like, I, I kind of want to say like it's like, you know how salt dries on rocks and it gets, I don't know, it gets white, but it's in areas and it's kind of, it's not quite a highlight, but yeah, I think it looks so cool. So I use the gypsum white mixed with the lighter brown and give all of those rocks on the top half, mostly, uh, a little white highlight. So now we are ready for the last layer of our water, which is the white caps and currents and bubbles and splashes with my favorite, again, the white highlight. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of just going around like whatever would be on top of the water, especially if you're like looking up over a cliff and looking down those kind of where the, the sea, sea spray and where it swirls around the rock and it still has all of those bubbles. Um, and I also feel like don't do it exactly on your other on your undercurrents. Do it kind of almost in like the the different areas, and then you'll be able to see the the difference between the white highlights on the top and then undercurrents have like almost their own swirling pattern, which I think look kind of cool too. So and a little bit more white highlights on the rocks, and uh, yeah, this is pretty close to the end. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was so fun and it was really it was really great to go out and check out some of the cliffs where I live and you know get get some inspiration and yeah I can't wait to see your paintings All right, and that is it. I will add my completed painting photo and one of the photos from the one place close to my house where I got my ideas, and that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and share with your friends, and we will see you for the next class. Thank you.